What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss a new disturbing bug that was found in iOS 17.5, our first look at official iOS 18 features, the latest on Apple's deal with OpenAI and also their new GPT 4.0 model, a crazy AirTag story, and much more. And as always, if you want to stay in the loop of everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because I make these videos once a week and also sign up for the Apple Den and newsletter if you want all of this in a written format. Okay, so let's start with that disturbing bug in iOS 17.5 that has been making a lot of headlines this week because of the nature of the bug, not necessarily because it's impacting a lot of people. But this bug basically brings back old deleted photos, including nudes. Yes, that is literally a headline that was written about this bug, which is pretty funny. But yeah, so basically this bug apparently brings back old photos that you previously deleted some sometimes up to two, three years ago. They just reappeared all of a sudden with iOS and iPadOS 17.5. And it seems like this was affecting users who did not have iCloud. They didn't have their photos stored in iCloud. However, some people said that even when they had their photos stored in iCloud, it still happened to them. So I've tried to get this, you know, I've tried to look through all my photos to see if anything has resurfaced that I deleted in the past. I checked my hidden folder, all of that, but this bug has not impacted me or really anybody that I know, but this was on Reddit, Mac rumors picked it up and a few other. So if you had this bug, please let me know in a comment down below. And if you don't mind, what was the photo of? Okay, so we all know about the Delta emulator where you can play Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, and all those awesome retro games. But also this week, we saw the launch of RetroArch and PSP, which are two emulators that's going to allow you to play several different games that you cannot play on Delta. So this is awesome. So RetroArch, and this one's been around for a while, but this supports Atari, Sega, Nintendo DS, PS1, PSP, and many other systems. So it's a pretty sophisticated you know, application to it just kind of go around on it doesn't have the best ui it really looks like you're running android when you open up this application but this is now available you can download roms and import them and play them on your iphone or ipad and the best part about retroarch is that it's also available on apple tv so as far as i know this is the first native apple tv application where you can play retro games so i've not gotten around to playing that on my apple tv but i definitely plan on doing so so i'll leave a link down below to retroarch it's in the app store maybe kind of hard to find apple kind of suppresses these applications for some odd reason but uh yeah it is in the app store and it's free it's ad free and it's also open source so nothing really to worry about there just be careful with the roms that you download which most of them are safe but you never know and then also we have ppss pp which is a psp emulator where you can download and play you know psp games or you can import rather and play psp games on your iphone or ipad and it is awesome i've been playing nfl street you know, Spyro, some of the old games, not Spyro, that Spyro is on PS1, but I've been playing some of the old games on PSP and it really just brings me back to my childhood. That's like one of my favorite devices ever. So 2024 is absolutely the year of gaming emulators on the iPhone. Like first we had Delta, now we have these other two legendary emulator applications. Now you might need the iZip or any type of unzip uh, application as well if you want to download the ROMs and be able to extract them and use them in those applications. So there's other videos on YouTube about that, but uh, I just wanted to tell you about those two applications that just launched recently. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the official iOS 18 features that Apple just announced. So every year, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel for a few years, Apple always shows us some new accessibility features before the Worldwide Developers Conference in June, and this year was no different. So we got a look at about 16 new features and changes coming in iOS 18 in terms of accessibility. So they do this for Global Accessibility Day. And I made a full dedicated video on these features. So if you want to watch that, it's up in the cards and down in the description below. I'm just going to kind of give you the Cliff Notes version right here in this segment. So the first feature they announced is the one that had everybody talking, and this is eye tracking. So this is going to use AI to allow you to navigate throughout iOS and iPadOS with just your eyes. And the cool thing about the eye tracking is that, you know, multiple companies have tried this in the past, but none have really been successful. So this is Apple's chance to really succeed with an eye tracking feature being native and built in 
to the iPhone. This could be a big, big deal for accessibility users. And then the other one that got the most engagement on my X thread was vehicle motion cues. So this is a feature that's aimed to reduce motion sickness for passengers in moving vehicles by reducing sensory conflict without interfering with the main content on the screen. So this uses sensors built into the iPhone and it's going to recognize when you're in a moving vehicle and it's going to respond accordingly. So that is gonna seem like magic when it happens if it actually you know works and makes people not feel sick when they're reading their phone in a car or a moving vehicle. So I can't wait to see what that looks like. They also announced music haptics and this is gonna use the Taptic engine to send haptics that go to the beat of the music. So it's gonna play taps, textures, and refined vibrations to the audio of the music. And then also vocal shortcuts is a big one that's going to allow you to assign custom phrases that Siri will understand to launch shortcuts and complete complex tasks. And those are just the headline features that Apple announced. If you wanna see all of the detailed features, I will leave that video again up in the cards and down in the description below. But pretty interesting, a lot more accessibility features this year than I believe any previous year in the past. So it looks like Apple has a lot that they're going to add with iOS and iPad OS 18 as expected. Also some major news this week, OpenAI announced their new GPT-40 model. And this is a major breakthrough for OpenAI and ChatGPT because this new model integrates text, vision, and audio processing and is much faster than GPT-4, which was already pretty fast. And this video right here shows how insane this new voice model is. Watch this. There was a robot named- No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal <laughs> expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. So the fact that we have real time responses, like hardly any delay between when you talk and when you get a response, the fact that there is a great emotion in the voices now, a lot more emotion than in GPT-4, the fact that you can combine the audio with both text and visions as well, like a visual of what's going on in your environment, and also the fact that you can over talk, you, like, you can interrupt uh, ChatGPT and say something while she's in the middle or he is in the middle of saying something back to you, you can interrupt and say what you want to say and ChatGPT will hear you. So this new GPT-4.0 model is insane. And if you have the ChatGPT application, you know, this model is going to be free for everybody. You do not need to be a plus subscriber, but if you tap on these little headphones icons right here in the bottom right hand corner, the little headphones, you will see this right here. And if you have the pause button in the bottom left hand corner, that means that is not the new GPT-4.0 model. That's just GPT-4. That feature is not new. That's been there for a while, but the new, you know, audio visual, the new model is going to be coming and the new voice features are going to be coming in the coming weeks. And then OpenAI also launched a new ChatGPT app for Mac OS with a refreshed UI, the ability to see and respond to what's on your screen and a simple keyboard shortcut, which is option and space to instantly ask ChatGPT a question. So I've had the chance to mess around with this on my Mac. So I did get access to this. It just showed up on ChatGPT. I am a plus subscriber and I was able to mess around with it. And it's very, very handy to have this built in natively. No, I no longer have to go to like a bookmark in Safari on ChatGPT, you know, and then paste in what I want to know. I just press option space and I can put in what I want to know. And it tells me right there in that native window. It's super nice. And again, the feature where ChatGPT can see your screen and, you know, respond to what's on your screen and summarize what you see on your screen. That that feature is not available yet, but that is coming very soon. So major news for OpenAI. And if you notice also during their keynote, they had a live event to show off this new model and all the new features. They used a lot of Apple products. They used iPhones, they used Macs. Obviously it's a Mac application, but still they used a lot of Apple products. And we heard about that partnership. We'll talk about that later in this video, but we heard about that partnership and it's seeming like, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that they're all using Apple products. Anyways, like I said, we'll talk about that in a moment in terms of the OpenAI and Apple deal. But now I wanna talk about, do you guys remember for the iPad Pro, Apple's big crush ad that was controversial for, in my opinion, no reason, where they crushed all those tech products, you know, to show that the iPad Pro crushes the competition. Well, in typical Samsung fashion, they kind of mocked Apple for that crush ad and they launched their own uncrush ad that says creativity can't 
be crushed. And in my opinion, the video, the ad is not very creative. So I don't know, watch, what do you guys think? Did you watch this? If you didn't, I'll leave it down below and just let me know what you think about Samsung mocking Apple for this ad. Now, also this week, we did see the release of iOS 17.5 to the public. So I did just wanna take a minute to address, you know, how this software has been running, some of the new features and all of that. So at the top of this video, we did talk about the new bug that's in iOS 17.5 where old photos could resurface. Again, I've not had that, but that is a apparently an issue with 17.5 since the final release that was not in any betas apparently only the final release but as far as the new features and everything else in iOS 17.5 it's actually been running really good and if you take a look at my comments in my what's new video it's pretty positive I mean most people are having a great experience with iOS 17.5 in terms of performance battery life pretty much everything I mean sure there's not a lot of features there a lot of people complained about the new pride wallpaper so if you are not aware there are new pride wallpapers so if you go to your lock screen here and go to create let's go out of here create a new one and if you go down we have a new pride section here or the sections not new but these wallpapers are new here and they're pretty cool there's a pretty sick animation on these so if you set it as a wallpaper pair and then you go home you can see that it changes there's a cool little animation every time you go from the lock screen to the home screen but aside from that I think the biggest feature in iOS 17.5 is the fact that you can now get alerts when an unauthorized Bluetooth tracker is following you even if it's not an air tag so this is going to be any of the other you know not any but a lot of the other trackers out there the Ufis, the chipolos you can see i have a chipolo now and i've tried to get this to work but it doesn't work for me for whatever reason with my chipolo spot so maybe it's only certain ones but there is the new you know uh the new protocol out there from apple and google partnering so that you get those unwanted tracking alerts when an unknown air tag is following you and it doesn't have to be an air tag now it can be any of these third-party trackers you get an alert on the iphone now even if it was set up with an Android and the same goes with on Android devices you'll get the alert for you know uh, the air tags and every other tracker and as far as news plus goes we did get the new offline mode and what I found interesting is that I've not had any issues actually download automatically so if you go into your settings a new change in iOS 17.5 is if you go into the news section here I can never find news there it is so if you go down to the news plus offline mode you have automatic downloads where it says it will automatically download content but I've not had anything download for me. So I had to manually download this Macworld one right there, but you can, you know, uh, apparently you will have automatic downloads if you use News Plus a lot. So again, when it comes to the performance, we scored a 2973 on the single core and a 7348 on the multi-core. That is a super solid score. That's the highest score I've received in a while, in months, if not, you know, on iOS 17 period uh, in Geekbench. So super strong performance here with iOS 17.5. I've really had no issues if you got a new iPad iPad Pro or iPad Air they got iPad OS 17.5 on launch day and that does seem to boost the performance of those as well and then when it comes to the battery life for some reason my battery life has been getting worse over the past week so I did have the RC build installed so I basically had 17.5 for two weeks on my main device but you could see the last week from Monday to Friday here you know I'm using up so much more battery but take a look at my activity my activity is down if not the same as it was in previous days of the week so I'm not sure what's going on but my battery life has been getting worse as of this week even though it's been the same as the RC the same build as RC and I didn't have those issues with the RC build so you guys will have to let me know is your battery life getting better is it worse on 17.5 I'm curious to hear your thoughts and then in terms of what to expect next from Apple we should be seeing iOS 17.6 beta 1 as early as next week so we could be seeing that on Tuesday May 21st so there was a slim possibility of seeing that this past week but it wasn't entirely expected I would expect to see it next week if not potentially even the following week on Tuesday May 28th so that's going to go for a while we're going to get iOS 18 beta 1 before the official release of iOS 17.6 in the meantime, we could see a 17.5.1. And with this new mysterious, you know, photos reappearing after deleting bug going on with iOS 17.5, we might see a 17.5.1 earlier than expected especially if Apple also has some security issues to patch up so don't be surprised if we get a 17.5.1 before the release of iOS 18 beta 1 on Monday June 10th which is the first day of WWDC and if you're not going to be in that live stream 
what do you subscribe to the channel for? That, that's the best live stream of the year is the Worldwide Developers Conference here on my channel. So make sure you're there. Okay, so now let's move on to some more Apple news. And let's start with that OpenAI and Apple partnership that we teased earlier, because we have more fresh news this week from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, who says that Apple is, quote, finalizing terms for a pact to use ChatGPT features in Apple's iOS 18. Apple has also held talks with Google about licensing their Gemini chatbots but those discussions have not led to an agreement. So what seemed like a pipe dream and something that would never happen just last year, it looks like now Apple might actually be partnering with OpenAI to get some sort of ChatGPT functionality on the iPhone natively. And after seeing the amazing features and just the amazing updates with their new GPT 4.0 model, this has me extremely excited for you know this partnership in iOS 18 as a whole. Now keep in mind, we're not going to hear about the you know actual partnership. It's not going to be finalized by the time iOS 18 beta one releases. So even if they do partner together, we're probably not going to see anything actually get integrated and working until later this year at the earliest. But nonetheless, this could be the key, the big golden ticket, the big golden key to getting a real Siri 2.0. So stay tuned. I'm sure we'll have a lot more news to share about this in the coming months. Also this week, Apple put out a press release Least, talking about how they stopped over seven billion dollars in potentially fraudulent transactions in the past four years so this is something they've done on a yearly basis where they share all their you know how good their security is and how many fraudulent transactions they decline so they also said that they locked 375,000 apps on the app store over privacy violations they killed 3.3 million accounts for fraud attempts and they blacklisted 14 million stolen credit cards and then of course the big news this week is that Apple launched the M4 iPad Pro and the M2 iPad Air, the first refresh to either of these iPads since 2022. So I did make a few videos on those. So if you missed those videos, I will leave them linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But my overall thoughts are that honestly, the iPad Pro has been so impressive to me. That's what I'm reading off of right now. It's been so impressive to me that I've really not even picked up my iPad Air. And I feel bad for saying that because the iPad Air is probably gonna be the iPad that is, is the best for most of you guys watching this video. And I think the 13 inch model is amazing. I think the fact that you can have a 13 inch tablet that costs less than you know $1,000 like you, you had to get before, like you had to spend before to get a 13 inch size, I think that's amazing. I think the 13 inch iPad Air makes a lot of sense for a lot of people, but the new iPad Pro is just incredible. I mean, the, the thing is so light especially the 11 inch model and the nano texture display has really amazed me so I actually made a short video showing the reflection difference between these two and I just think that the the nano texture display is a lot better in person than what I imagined it would be it just gets less fingerprints on it it doesn't you know have as much glare obviously that's the big thing it doesn't have glare or major reflections it also doesn't kill the quality so a lot of people were asking me you know doesn't it kill the quality it doesn't you know doesn't the the videos look bad now they don't look as as good as the one without the nano texture and, and the thing is no i mean the the display quality is still better than my old m1 ipad pro even with the nano textured display so it makes a minor difference if you're comparing them side by side but overall i love the nano texture and i might actually be sticking with that of course i'll make more videos and reviews on that but i've just been super impressed with the ipad pro and of course the m4 chip is super overpowered i don't think it's really necessary for ipad os at this point but it is still nice to have and then finally just as tradition and let's talk about another crazy AirTag story. And this time, a person in Australia called police to report that their scooter had been stolen from the city one evening. And thankfully, they did have an AirTag attached to it so they could see where it was going in real time. So they were able to call the police and provide live updates as to where the scooter was located and where it was driving to. And apparently, the police do not play around in Australia because they not only sent out a police car, they also sent out a police helicopter helicopter to canvas the area and locate the scooter and the two suspects. Now, these two suspects were 15 years old. Yes, 15 teenagers. That is sad and just incredible. So of course they were arrested and they also snitched on a 32 year old neighbor nearby who was also in possession of two stolen scooters in his garage. I would imagine that that 37 year old is the one who planned and is probably trying to pay these teenagers to steal these scooters for him so he doesn't get caught. Well. 
looks like that backfired on you, buddy. So yeah, just another reason that an air tag is so important. I, I say this every week, like a, you know, beating a dead horse, but put an air tag in anything that you value, anything and everything that you value. It's worth the what 29 bucks. So that is the latest in the world of Apple. And if you want to see what happens next week and in future weeks, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I make these Apple weekly episodes every Saturday. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.